we're very pleased today to be welcoming Helene Carroll. Um, she'll be presenting her alphabet series that she was working for three years on from 2015 to 2018. This is her second exhibition at, at the museum. She held the show, oh, was it third? Excuse me. <laughs> ah, well, her, her recent one was in 2017. Um, but actually, her art on the Holocaust is, is really her lifetime experience. Uh, she says she's been looking for and creating a vocabulary to communicate the, the horror of that history and communicating it to us in such a way that we can take it in with, with poetry, with grace, with beauty, with relevance to the everyday New Zealand life. So please welcome Helene Carroll. Tenakoto, Tenakoto, Tenakoto Katoa, Ko Ellen Carol Aho. Thank you very much, Madeline, for introducing me, and thank you, everyone, for turning up. Um, I was going to go through each of the 26 images that are on display here at Aratoi, at, um, which comprise the alphabet series. Um, I hope. Um, I don't know how much knowledge all of you have or how well read you are. I hope um, um, this isn't too patronizing or boring. And please don't hesitate to interrupt if you would like and ask me things and I'll do my best to try and answer. We'll start off with A is for Auschwitz. Auschwitz is the German name for the town of Auschwitzim the town where my father grew up and where his family had lived for many generations. Ironically, Auschwitz was the camp where my mother ended up being incarcerated in. The Auschwitz camp complex was the largest of its type established during the Nazi regime. It comprised of three main camps, all of which used prisoners for forced labor. One of the camps was used as a killing center the police and the SS deported at least 1.3 million people to Auschwitz. Of these, approximately 1.1 million were murdered. In this painting, I've depicted the rail entrance to Auschwitz-Birkenau, not the better known gates with the inscription Arbeit macht frei. At the entrance to Auschwitz I, um, which we'll come to later, I think, I think that this would have been the view that greeted my mother on her arrival at the camp. I've contrasted A is for Auschwitz with A is for Apple because many children's ABCs start with A is for Apple. The apple can re represent innocence or even original sin. My simplified and stylized apple sits on a Pacific pattern tablecloth with a fragment of tarpa cloth anchoring the whole image to my everyday here and now. In, these, in all of these alphabet paintings, I've used tarpa patterning to frame the top half of these images to make it very clear that these paintings, whilst they deal with events from history far away, are created here in Aotearoa, in the Antipodes and the Pacific. B is for Belzec. Could we move on? Oh, you've done, you're very good. I don't have to even ask you. <laughs> Belzec was the, a Nazi extermination camp built by the SS for the purpose of implementing Operation Reinhardt, the plan to eradicate Polish Jewry, a key part of the final solution. The camp operated from March 1942 until the end of December 1942. The camp was situated in the district of Lublin in German-occupied Poland. The burning of exhumed corpses on five open grids continued until March 1943. Between 430,000 and 500,000 Jews are believed to have been murdered by the SS at Belzec. We believe that one of these people to have been my maternal grandmother, Regina Rivka Zayden, in this painting, I've placed stones by the railway tracks in memory of those who have perished. 
The reason that Jews place stones on graves probably draws on pagan customs, but the stones can also symbolize the permanence of memory. They can also be seen as a calling card so that others may know that a grave has been visited. This bird in the top half of the painting is based on the Tongan peace dove. I have him flying above those New Zealand hills and the blue sky is anchoring the painting to the Antipodes, the Pacific and Aotearoa. Okay, C is for Chelno. Chelno was the first of the Nazi extermination camps. It was situated 50 kilometers north of the city of Boc, um, renamed Lütmannstadt, near the village of Chelno. The camp was specifically set out to carry out ethnic cleansing through mass killings. The vast majority of those that perished were Jews from West Central Poland, along with Romani and foreign Jews from Hungary, Bohemia, Moravia, Germany, Luxembourg, and Austria. The victims were killed by asphyxiation with the use of gas bands. The prisoners that I've portrayed in this painting have no faces or names. On their arrival at Chelno, they faced this prospect of certain death. At best, only a handful of people survived Chelno. And C is for cone shell. I use the cone shell quite often in my paintings. Its beautiful exterior covers an extremely poisonous interior. I've had an ongoing fascination with shells and I've collected them since childhood. Again, that Pacific pattern clasps some tapa and a fragment of Persian rug. All these surfaces, all these surface many times in my work and reflect my love of texture and pattern. D is for Dachau. Dachau was the first concentration camp to open in Germany. Initially, it was meant to hold political prisoners. It was opened in 1933 by Heinrich Himmler and was situated around 16 kilometers north of Munich. Its purpose was enlarged to include forced labor and eventually the incarceration of Jews, German and Austrian criminals and later foreign nationals from countries that Germany occupied or invaded. I've included Dachau in my alphabet as it was a place I remember my parents discussing when I was a child. The prisoners are wearing the striped pajamas that the Nazis favored, and they're standing at attention during appel, which is roll call, which was often very prolonged and painful. D is for doll. These nesting Russian dolls are often part of my visual art from their aesthetic appeal I'm interested in the notion that one doll maybe holds several others in its interior. They remind me of onions and their many layered skins, a metaphor for being human, the very many diverse and disparate parts that, were all, that we all contain within us. E is for Eichmann. Otto Adolf Eichmann was one of the major organizers of the Holocaust. He was given the task of organizing, facilitating, and managing the logistics involved in the mass deportation of Jews to the ghettos and the extermination camps in Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe. He was captured by Mossad, Israel's, Nazi, uh, Israel's intelligence service, and was brought to trial in Israel, where he was hanged in 1962. He stood trial on 15 criminal charges, but claimed he was just following orders. The philosopher Hannah Arendt wrote the book Eichmann in Jerusalem, and she coined the phrase, the banality of evil. I have put Eichmann in this alphabet as I have strong memories of this trial from my childhood, and I recall it being discussed and fiercely argued over around my family dinner table by my parents, grandfather, and their many Polish-Jewish friends. E is for echinoderm. I've always been interested in this group of marine animals. I used to collect sand dollars as a child. Later, when we lived in Indonesia, I collected a variety of different sea urchin shells. 
with their beautiful patterning, I often include these in my work as a decorative element. F is for flight. The flight that I'm referring to in this image is about the countless people who fled from their homes at the time of Hitler's invasion of Poland and then later from other parts of Europe. Flight is about leaving your home to go to an unknown destination that may or may not be safer than the place that you left in the first place. Flight is motivated by fear and by not having any other viable choice for survival. My father, whose town was Oshvienchim, fled east after the rest of his family were murdered. He fetched up in the Tanov ghetto where he met my mother. F is for fish. The fish is a recurring symbol in my work. I have kept goldfish on and on, on and off over the past few decades. The carp is a metaphor for long life. I love the movement and the, of their brightly colored bodies. Matisse frequently painted his goldfish in still lives and interiors. G is for ghetto. The term was initially used in Venice to describe the part of the city to which Jews were restricted and segregated. During World War II, ghettos were established by the Nazis to confine Jews and Romani into tightly packed areas of the cities of Eastern Europe. In this image, the German signage, Von Gebeit der Juden betreten verboten, translates as Jewish quarter, no entry, the suggestion being that the Jews don't want you to enter, whereas the reality was that they were not permitted to go out. The Polish text in the painting, Tylko na Żydów, means only for Jews, again suggesting that this might be a choice or a preferred option. My mother and her mother were incarcerated in the Tanov ghetto. That is where she met my father and where they got married. G is for grandfather. My Jaju, Polish for grandfather, was my primary caregiver when I was an infant and child. He took his duties very seriously and was my protector and great love. I painted him wearing a yarmulke, a Jewish skull cap, and talus prayer shawl. He was the only religious member of my small family. Because of him, we went to synagogue once a year on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, and he kept alive the Jewish festivals and cultural traditions in our home. Oh, no. We lost? Okay. You're right. H is for Holocaust. Dictionary meaning of Holocaust. One, destruction or slaughter on a mass scale, especially caused by fire or nuclear war. Two, historical, a Jewish sacrificial offering which was burnt completely on an altar. In this painting, I'm referring to the Shoah, Shoah being the Hebrew word for Holocaust, Definition of Shoah, the mass murder of Jews under the German Nazi regime, 1941 to 1945. In this image, I've placed six candles in memory of those who were murdered. Each candle represents one million people. The word Holocaust was used before World War II to describe the Armenian genocide of World War I. The word was also used to describe the firebombing of Dresden and of Hiroshima, the effect of nuclear war. H is for home. Home refers to my mother's home in Tanov at Ulitsa Schwente Anne, St. Anne's Street, number nine. I've often depicted the front door and facade of this building, which stands to this day. The apartment and all her family's belongings were confiscated when the Nazis invaded Poland. My mother and grandmother were forcibly evicted from their home and incarcerated in the Tanov ghetto. I is for inferno, a place or state that resembles hell. From Italian, el 
hell from the Latin infernus. Here I'm, refer here I'm depicting one of the crematoria chimneys at Auschwitz, inferno can also mean a large fire that's dangerously out of control. And secondly, hell, with reference to Dante Alighieri's divine comedy, Lasciati ogni speranza, voi chantrate, abandon all hope, you who enter here. I, as for Iris, this, a flower of great beauty, which I've always grown in my gardens, and I've plant, painted them often as well. The iris takes its name from the Greek goddess of the rainbow. J is for Jew. There are many different ways to identify as being Jewish. One definition, a member of the people and cultural community whose traditional re religion is Judaism and who trace their origins to the ancient Hebrew people of Israel. Wikipedia says Jewish people are an ethno-religious group and a nation originating from the Israelites and historical Israel and Judah. Prior to World War II, the worldwide Jewish population reached a peak of 16.7 million, approximately 0.7% of the world population. Approximately 6 million Jews were murdered during the Holocaust in, 19, in 2016, the population of Jews was estimated to be 14.4 million, less than 0.2% of the total world population. In this image, I've portrayed my grandmother in a cattle wagon, wagon being transported to her death in Belzec. She was murdered because she was a Jew. J is for jazz, a little homage to Henri Matisse, a painter whose work I have always loved and been influenced by. Jazz was a book of cut paper images that Matisse started to make when he was convalescing after an operation and was bed bound in 1941. K is for Kristallnacht. Kristallnacht, also referred to as the night of broken glass, this was a pogrom against Jews throughout Nazi Germany on the 9th and 10th of November, 1938, carried out by SA paramilitary forces and civilians. Nazis in Germany torched synagogues, vandalized Jewish homes, schools, and businesses, and, closed, and killed close to 100 Jews. Kristallnacht was a turning point as it changed the Nazi persecution of Jews from social, economic, and political to physical with beatings, incarceration, and murder. Kristallnacht is often referred to as the beginning of the Holocaust. Okay, is for Kofi, much loved harbinger of spring in our gardens here in New Zealand. It's all right, I can still see. L is for Luftwaffe. The Luftwaffe was the aerial branch of the combined German Wehrmacht military forces founded in February 1935. The Luftwaffe was sometimes referred to as Adolf's airplanes. Wehrmacht means defense force, 1935 to 1945. The Luftwaffe was the main support weapon of the German army throughout the six years of conflict and contributed to much of Nazi Germany's early successes in 1939 to 1942. Elisper Lamb. In Christianity, the Lamb re represents Christ as both suffering and triumphant. It is typically a sacrificial animal and also may symbolize gentleness, innocence, and purity. M is for Musliman. Musliman was a slang term among captives of World War II concentration camps to refer to those prisoners suffering from a combination of starvation and exhaustion and who were resigned to their impending death. Musulman, Musulmaner, the German version of Musulman, meaning Muslim, 
a person reaching the Muslim stage had little, if any, chance of surviving for more than a few weeks. Some people think that the term possibly comes from the Muslim's inability to stand for any time due to the loss of the leg muscle strength, this, thus spending much of their time in a prone position reminiscent of the position of Muslims at prayer. Emma's for mountains. In this image, I painted those iconic New Zealand mountains with a bit of a nod to Makan. Colin McCann changed the way we view our landscape. I often use stylized mountains and hills to firmly anchor my work to my reality of living in Aotearoa. N is for Nazi. The National Socialist German Workers' Party, usually referred to in English as the Nazi Party, it was a far-right political party in Germany that was active between 1920 and 1945. In this image, I've used the swastika symbol or logo, de dictionary definition of swastika, an ancient symbol in the form of an equal armed cross with each arm con continued at a right angle, used in clockwise form as the emblem of the German Nazi party. The original swastika was, not an, was an ancient religious icon in the cultures of Eurasia and used as a symbol of divinity and spirituality in Indian religions. N is for Nautilus. The Nautilus forms part of my love and interest in shells. When we lived in Indonesia, we found Nautilus shells washed up on various beaches. We were never lucky enough to find a perfect example. I love their size and their wonderful patterning. O is for oven. From August 1940 until May 1942, Topf and Sona built these double muffle ovens at Auschwitz Camp 1. In October 1941, the SS placed an order for, three mu for five three muffle ovens for the new Auschwitz-Birkenau extermination camp, Auschwitz II, where it was estimated over a 1,000 people per day would die. Prisoners assigned to a unit known as the Sonderkommando had to remove the bodies from the gas chambers to the furnaces. Several bodies at a time were burnt in a single oven. O is for ocean. New Zealand is a group of islands surrounded by ocean, in this image, I've portrayed our windswept Wairarapa coastline. P is for prisoner. The image portrayed shows how prisoners were photographed and assigned number and a category on arrival at Auschwitz. Incoming prisoners were assigned a camp serial number which was sewn to their prison uniforms. Only those selected for work were issued with serial numbers. Those prisoners who were sent directly to the gas chambers were not registered and received no tattoo. Tens of thousands of prisoner identification photographs were taken, three of each inmate. 38,915 prisoner mugshots photographs are still in existence. And peers for power. Māori name for abalone, a delicious shellfish often found in New Zealand waters. Q is for question. Where was God? Where was man? This quote I believe to have been graffiti found at Auschwitz. If there is a God, he will have to beg my forgiveness. These words were carved into a concentration camp cell by a Jewish prisoner at Mauthausen. Part of being Jewish is to ask questions. Often a question is answered by another question. Much of my adult life has been spent on trying to fathom the question, where was man? How would I have behaved if I was faced with the moral and ethical dilemma that the ordinary citizens of occupied Nazi Germany would have had to confront. Would I have resisted? Would I have looked away? 
One can never know how one would act until one is tested. Cures for quince, lovely autumn fruit. R is for Ravensbrück. Ravensbrück was a German concentration camp exclusively for women from 1939 to 1945. It was situated 90 kilometers north of Berlin. The, targ the largest single national group consisted of 40,000 Polish women. The others were comprised of 26,000 Jewish women from various countries, 18,000 Russians, 8,000 French, and 1,000 Dutch women. More than 80% were political prisoners. Of some of the 130,000 female prisoners who passed through Ravensbrück, only 15,000 survived until liberation. My mother, Giza, was finally liberated from Neustadt Gleva, a deadly subcamp of Ravensbrück. R is for rug. I've often used the patterning patterning and decorative elements of Persian rugs in my work. I grew up in a home that had them on the floors and I have them in my home too. I like the fact that a rug is easily rolled up and portable. To me they denote coziness and the warmth of home. S is for star. Jews throughout Nazi occupied Europe were forced to wear a badge in the form of a yellow star as a means of identification. The star which represented the Star of David was outlined in thick black lines and the word Jew was painted in mock Hebraic letters. In this image, Yud, the Dutch version. The Star of David is a Jewish symbol made up of two overlaid equilateral triangles that form a six-sided star. It appears on synagogues, Jewish tombstones, and the flag of the State of Israel. S is for scissors. Scissors are a recurring motif in my paintings. From early childhood, I had a great fondness for cutting and making things. I find them to be aesthetically pleasing. In some of my paintings, I portray my grandfather brandishing a pair of scissors at threatening wolves. T is for tattoo. In this painting, I've placed my mother's arm bearing the tattoo number A24064. I'm not 100% sure if this is the correct number on her arm. By the time that I was ready to really look at it and talk to her about it, she was quite old and her skin had become rather crepey and the ink had faded. During the Holocaust, Concentration camp prisoners received tattoos at only one location, and that was Auschwitz. Once, when I was a child, a visiting friend who noticed my mother's tattoo asked me if she couldn't remember her telephone number. She is for tapa. I've been using elements of tapa design for a very long time. I started when I made a series of paintings while living in a batch at Wainui Beach, Gisborne. The batch was typically decorated with cast-offs and unwanted objects. The one thing of beauty in this batch was a Fijian tapa hanging on a wall above our bed. I used this decorative element of tapa as a symbol for being here in the Pacific, which is my home, even though my preoccupations are of a time and place in Europe. U is for uniform. Totenkopf is the German word for the skull and crossbones or death's head symbols. The Totenkopf is an old international symbol for death, the defiance of death, danger, or the dead, as well as piracy. The coat of arms of Germany displays a black eagle with a red beak, tongue, and feet on a golden field. The Nazi eagle symbol is called Reichsadler, Imperial Eagle. Both these symbols appear on a uniform cap of the, U of the SS. U is for univalve. The shells in this painting are murex. We first came across them whilst living in Indonesia. 
They are armed with many spikes as a protective measure for the creature that lives within. <clears throat> v is for van. In this case, a gas van. A gas van was a vehicle re-equipped as a mobile gas chamber. The van had an airtight compartment for its victims into which exhaust fumes, carbon monoxide, was transmitted while the engine was running. It took 10 minutes to produce enough carbon monoxide to suffocate the victims. About 700,000 people were killed in gas vans. Sara was a Swiss manufacturer of trucks and vans. V is for Viola. Viola tricolor, heartsease pansy, a little escape growing in our garden. W is for why, and yet another question to which the, there really is no answer, but more questions. This is probably why I made the alphabet in the first place, hoping for some answers but not actually finding any. At the very least, this alphabet has been an attempt at searching for some sort of clarity. I guess that these images are a way of bearing witness, honoring the dead and remembering the past. A quote from the Talmud, the primary source of Jewish religious law. Do not be daunted by the world's grief. Do justly now, walk humbly now, you are not obligated to complete the work, but neither are you free to abandon it. In this image, the words Arbeit macht frei, work makes you free, appear. The slogan appeared at the entrance to Auschwitz and other Nazi concentration camps. W is for wine. I've made a still life of a table setting for the Sabbath Friday evening. Jews celebrate the Sabbath and blessings are made over wine, bread, and candles. X is for experiment. A series of medical experiments were carried out on large numbers of prisoners, including children, by Nazi Germany in its concentration camps in the early to mid-1940s during World War II and the Holocaust. Typically, the experiments resulted in death, trauma, disfigurement, or permanent disability. The experiments were justified for three reasons. One, survival of military personnel. Two, testing of drugs and treatments. Three, the advancement of Nazi racial and ideological goals. X is for box. I've portrayed a woven Balinese offerings box sitting on a black and white checked cloth. The black and white checks in Hindu culture are a metaphor for the struggle between good and evil, the black and the white, the dark and the light, I suppose, also. Why is for Babiya? Babiya is a ravine near the Ukrainian capital of Kiev and the site of massacres carried out by German forces and Ukrainian collaborators during their campaign against the Soviet Union in World War II. As the victims moved into the ravine, Einsatzgruppe detachments shot them in small groups. 33,771 Jews were massacred here in two days. Why is for yellow, a small homage to Vincent van Gogh, referring to his yellow chair and sunflowers that he painted so brilliantly. And finally, Z is for Cyclone B. Cyclone B, cyclone in English, was the trade name of a cyanide-based pesticide invented in Germany in the early 1920s. It contained, it consisted of hydrogen cyanide, prussic acid. The product is infamous for its use by Nazi Germany during the Holocaust 
to murder approximately one million people in gas chambers installed at Auschwitz-Birkenau, Majdanek, and other extermination camps. Z is for zinnia, self-explanatory, beautiful, brightly colored summer flowering annuals that we often plant in our gardens. That's it. Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>